Hello and welcome. It's day 14. You did it. You did it. You did it. Day 14. We are here. And of course, it just means that we're closer to the midway, but we're going to the midway. It's pretty cool. We're on our way to the summit of the mountain, and then we will start hiking down. So today we are working with inversions and inversions are, I think that they are a daily essential in our lives. Yoga wants to first help us to rid ourselves of that which no longer serves or be aware of that which is lying latent in our bodies. And inversions help us have a nice shakeup. Um, in that, in service to that, and in service to giving ourselves the opportunity to see the world in a different way and to remind us what the real captain of the ship is. And that is the being, the curiosity of that which is not yet known. As the artist William Blake once said, everything we see was once imagined. The courage to imagine, the courage to move forward without without taking the world that you see as the only thing that can be, that is something that yoga helps us embrace because of the simple act of doing something differently, like going upside down. Hmm. So let's get started. Let's close our eyes first. And we're just going to ground for a moment. Let's ground through our root chakra. Today, I was thinking as I was setting up the lights for the video, I noticed that the way these tripods work is that they don't push only against the ground. But when we tighten something to make it stable, then we are having, we're forcing the pressures of the items, the, uh, screw we're spinning and the rod it's it's pushing up against we're creating tension we're creating a push between them and that push is a point of stability and balance for that tripod and every time we tighten something we're we're creating that moment of push against the ground i mean against two forces against each other and that creates the balance this doesn't apply today because we are doing inversions and we don't have a lot of things pushing against each other in order to balance. But I do want to share that thought today because it came up today and things reveal themselves to us in perfect timing. And I want you to carry that with you through the rest of your practice as we do practice balances. And we remember that moment always to root within the shoulder sockets to keep the shoulders down so that the fingers can stretch farther out within the ground, within the seat, within the root chakra. Root here. And when we root down into the root chakra, suddenly I lean back a bit more. My chakras are aligned. My neck is closer to straight. I'm straightening up through the top of my head instead of through my forehead. Instead of performing straight, I am straight. I be straight. That's the difference. Let's take one breath here through the nose, inhale. And exhale. One more breath through the nose, inhale. And exhale out through the mouth, let it all out. We don't have much of a day to let out, but we can still let something out. Let's let the eyes float open and let's get into our five Tibetan rituals, also known as the fountain of youth. Let's go drink from the fountain. Okay, just checking my radius. Excellent. Mm. Chin parallel to the ground, shoulders root into the shoulder sockets so that the fingers can stretch out. Today, I'm not as stretchy as I was yesterday, which be excuse me, which means I'm going to have my fingertips a little bit lower than up here because this takes a little bit of effort and this doesn't. 
be where you are. Gaze is towards the ground. Let's start spinning. One, counterclockwise. I mean, clock. Two. Three. Four. Five. Bring your body together. Let your eyes close. Let the spin catch you. Mm. Moving to camel. Grounding into those tops of the feet, shins, knees, fingers pointing towards the ground. Shoulders grounding towards the heart. Elbows wanting to be closer to each other, creating stability and safety for our upper body. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, okay, we're going to be in order today, which means now we're going to J. <laughs> Starting in the J position, fingers, make sure to support your lower back if it needs support. Otherwise, hands are on either side of your body, laying against alongside the body. And inhale. Three. Four. Five. I promised that I would count because I got feedback that counting makes a difference. So I will do my best to remember that. Okay, let's go to tabletop. Again, the elbows are squeezing towards each other, creating safety in the shoulders, in the arms, in the upper body, in for the neck. Our feet are parallel to the ground. I mean, are flat on the ground and parallel to each other. And make sure your arms are wide enough for your seat to float through on the exhale. Here we go, tabletop one. Two. Three. Four. Five. I'm almost done with this cold, but you can see that my breath isn't the richness that it was at the beginning of the challenge, but I'm almost back. Okay, we are now going to um, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Remember, you can do any level, light, normal, or more. Here we go. Inhale, one. <clears throat> Three, I forgot. Four. Everyone comes back together and letting everything we just did ground into our body. There's typically an openness. Even my voice is opened. Inhale. And exhale. Um, or a breath out. Let's get into inversions. We're going to begin with the most important inversion, in my opinion, which is legs up the wall. We're going to do it again at the end, but I want you to know this one first, because if you are a person who's in their first three days of menstruation, regardless of what they're doing in the class, regardless of whether or not the teacher tells you that this is something that you should be aware of, you should be aware of it. We are our greatest um, teachers. We are our greatest protectors. As my father once said, a good patient, this is when I was going into surgery. 
a good patient is a dead patient. So speak up. Okay. So we're going to move this plant off to the side. Journal. Da, 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 da. Don't forget to recommit. And we're going to do legs up the wall. So what we're going to see is that if if this was to be my wall, my flat wall, we're going to bring our body, we're going to scoot our body so far up that our legs are literally kissing the wall. Okay, that's what legs up the wall poses. So we would scoot our body and walk our legs so close to the wall that our seat bones are touching the wall. And then from there, we'll just walk ourselves down. And there's even closer to B as you move yourself down. Ooh, the ground is cold. The ground is cold. Oh my God, I got my mouth. Okay. And we're going to, from here, we just spread our arms. And this is legs up the wall. You saw something like this when we did the work with the, um, you saw this pose when we did the work with the uh, towel to support our back. But this is basic legs up the wall pose. And this is what we're going to take towards the end if we have time. But if we don't, this is what's most important. Um, this is an inversion. And this is an opportunity for the head to still be below the heart in service to the heart. And this is what you're going to do when you get to the inversion part of the class. If you are in your first three days of your cycle. Many of you know that I um, menstrual health is very important to me and ending menstrual suffering from, from people who menstruate is extremely important to me because there is a way. A key step on that journey to ending menstrual suffering happens to be that we actually are gentle with our body and kind with our body with the physiological process that it's undertaking and when we don't aggressively invert, that's a kindness that we're doing ourselves. So you do not get a medal. In fact, you are going to hurt yourself more if you try to contradict what your body needs. And that's where pain and suffering comes from. So this is one way to practice gentleness. And if you are dealing with menstrual um, issues, this is a way to accommodate what's happening instead of work against it in order to adapt and to be what you're not, to be a person who's not menstruating or to be a person who doesn't have a menstrual cycle. You are not that. So um, be where you are and you will thrive. You will thrive in your awesomeness and wholeness and then they can be where they are. Okay. Our next inversion that we're going to look at is handstand and everybody says no 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 I'm, this is a beginner's this is the beginner's uh journey this is why would we do handstand you've already been doing handstand as you know i will arrive i am home that means that anytime you mean to start something you have already started you're being present with it it's not about getting there it's about being where you are Every time I've said to use protective grip, you've been preparing for handstand. A handstand is simply standing on your feet. It's rooting through your hands instead of your feet. So every time, <clears throat> every time that you have gone like this, just this simple movement, you have started handstand. All you're going to do is just put more weight on it. That's it. And eventually you'll put more and more and more weight on it till eventually your whole body is standing on your hands. Now, the key to get into handstand is to root, to look down, look down. I spent some time with a student last week and he's working on his handstand and he didn't want to look down. He looked out. He kept looking out and I said, no, 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 look down. He said, I am. He kept looking out because he's thinking about the up instead of the down. So to combat that, this is how we're going to start handstand. The two hands are going to face the wall. They're going to be very, 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 very close to the wall. Like we're talking. Look, look, how much is that? Is that like, I don't know, five inches 
or eight, nine centimeters. That's how close you are to the wall. You can be so close that, yeah, that you're like a hand's length at most away from the wall. And then you're going to your eyes are going to look down to the wall. So I want you to watch the screen while I demonstrate this. All I want you to think about is your butt coming to the wall. You're just gonna kick so that your butt comes to the wall. It's a little wet here. So I'm just gonna kick. <clears throat> I'm gonna push up. Oopsie. <laughs> it's really hard to not throw my legs into the air. So this may not work. Yeah, I don't think I can just, yeah, I can't. Okay, so that was the thought experiment. I was gonna say, just to focus on thinking about your legs, um, your butt coming against the wall, but it's, that's not how handstands work. That's not how our body works. We wanna go straight. We wanna stand up. So we'll just go right into it. For handstand, all you're gonna do for the beginner's handstand is you're going to keep your eyes focused on the ground and you're gonna hurl your body your body against the wall okay so i'll demonstrate my hands are down and it doesn't matter which leg you kick up with in fact i recommend that you alternate legs to make sure that they're both strong enough to kick you up um, my hands are a hand's length away from the wall. I am looking down at the ground. This would be much easier if I could use a flat wall, but I can't because I don't have a flat wall that's tall enough. This one's tall enough. No, I don't think so. Okay, so I'm going to keep my eyes focused on the ground and I'm going to kick up. Shoulders pinned towards the heart. And one more. Okay. And from here, if you can, if you were to zoom in on the camera right now, you would see that my hands are not flat on the ground. They're pushing away from the ground. And my body, my toes are just tapping along the wall. And as they find stability, eventually I will stand. And that is handstand. So you want to keep, so if you're practicing a handstand, spend some time every single day. Feeling that height, feeling that flatness, and eventually your body's going to find the balance. If you are learning a handstand from somebody who has chunky muscles, they're making it about strength. My experience of handstand is that it's about balance, not strength. My experience about headstand is it's about balance, not strength. And so it's a matter of just like when we did dead bug pose where we had our, we were on our back and we had our arms and our legs in the air. And I said, find the natural balance so that hanging in the air is effortless. That same feeling is there in handstand. So I kicked up on my left leg. So now I'm gonna kick up on my right leg to practice. And when you're first starting handstand, it's really helpful to do something called donkey kicks, where you push, you're looking at the ground and you push up with two feet. The reason I can't do it here is when you do donkey kick, your body does go really fast into the wall. And these are windows. I do not want to go flying out of my window. I don't think I could be that strong, but I'd rather err on the side of caution. After donkey kicks, you can do donkey kicks for a while. Donkey kicks. Okay. Then you switch to essentially donkey kicks on one leg. So I did it on the left leg and now I'm going to do it on the right leg to balance. You can do the same. Okay. I, I don't, I haven't kicked up on my right leg in a long time. Looking down at the ground. And there we are, hands down. And sometimes I make it all the way to the wall and sometimes I just go up into handstand. But that's after showing up for, I want to say two or three years. Just showing up, kicking up, feeling the balance. And one day, your body finds it. You don't find it. Your body finds it. So if you have any questions about handstand, please ask me. I hope that you watched all of that. Now, I recommend you pause and practice what I just said. Put the timer on for two minutes. Practice. Next, 
we're going to go to shoulder stand. Shoulder stand is the one that I think is most accessible. And the, no, let's not say most accessible. Let's say least intimidating uh, between handstand, headstand, and shoulder stand. We're not going to work on headstand today. Okay, so shoulder stand. We're going to build it up from beginner to normal to more. Or beginner to, I need better words for the levels. Okay, you're going to ease your body down to the ground. Watch me. My eyes are focused always on the sky. I cannot look left or right in this pose because when I have weight on my neck, I will hurt myself and I will be in a lot of pain for a few days. So your eyes, your gaze will always stay on the ceiling, which is why I need you to look at the screen at me while I demonstrate right now so that then you can do it. Okay, so I'm gonna start climbing my legs up. This, I've arrived, I am home. This is shoulder stand. We're going to move through plow to get to shoulder stand. Plow is a wonderful intermediate pose. We're going to push our hands against the ground and as we do that, our back comes up. This could be the pose. I've arrived, I am home. You can use pillows to support that moment and feel that. And then as you climb, you can use pillows or a block to help you climb. From here, you're going to push up, up, up until your oh, hair is in the way. So legs are on the ground. And then this is what I want you to pay attention to is my, are my hands. So my legs are on the ground. My gaze is at the ceiling. And now as I build up my shoulder stand and my shoulder, my elbows still want to move towards each other, just like they did in camel, just like they've done so many times. I've said the elbows want to be together. They do. That's going to guarantee um, safety for your upper body, limbs, and ankle, and um, joints. So from plow, I'm going to bend my knees towards the sky. And then I'm going to bring my knees to the sky. And this is slow. We're talking, if you're new to shoulder stand, this is showing up every day for one to two minutes. This moment will take about a week to get into. Build into it slowly. And then finally... You climb your knees to the sky first, then you climb your toes to the sky, then you walk, 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 up your back. And because it's morning, I cannot get all the way to straight. But once you're at straight and you're actually balancing on your shoulders, which I can't reach today, not this early, then you will let one arm go, let the other arm go, which I can't do too early and you will be in full shoulder stand so that is shoulder stand let's practice so let me show you how to come out of it first grab the two hands and plow grab the two ankles and then slowly roll down through the spine giving yourself a little massage and we'll do a counter counter pose which is fish where we'll walk, we'll keep our head on the ground so that our forehead comes up and we'll pull up on our elbows. And that's fish. It's our counter pose to shoulder stand. Okay, if everybody wants to practice, let's do it. Are you ready? Start your engine off to Plätze. Okay. Now, we're going to start with our feet flat on the ground. Have your bolster is ready. If you're going to be using bolsters and stopping a little bit earlier than where we go, because you know where your body is, you're practicing yoga, and you're staying where you are in your practice instead of where you think you should be. Okay. Here we go. Let's start building up toward our plow. So we're going to walk our feet up, 
Then we're going to bring our hands under our um, tailbone and kick up with our feet. Right now, my arms, my hands are supporting my seat and my body is, is at about, don't look at the screen, my body is at about 45 degree angle from the ground. And now I'm going to bring my seat further and further toward 90 degrees, further and further toward perpendicular. If I feel any strain on my neck, I stop. I stop where I am. There is no need to strain your neck. That is short-term pain for long-term pain, or I guess you could say short-term gain because you feel like you're doing the pose for long-term pain. Don't do it. Stay where you are. I'm going to move towards erect if, I, if I'm not hurting my neck. My toes can now come onto the ground, and that's plow pose, or they're still up because that's where I am. It's okay. And then from there, I'm going to keep my gaze on the ceiling. I'm going to bend my knees so that now my toes are touching my then my toes are going to move so that the tips of my toes are pointing towards the ground and my knees are going to move up so the tops of my knees are pointing towards the sky. At this point, it might be easier for me to walk my hands up a little farther to walk them closer to my lower, I mean, to my upper back. And then I'm going to bring my knees towards straight. And then to top it off, I'm going to bend my toes so they reach, 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 reach towards the sky. And now I'm in shoulder stand. I can play up here. Feel how that feels. Feel what straight feels like. And when I'm ready, slowly, I can either go through the bending of the knees and bring my body down, or I can take a press. So don't look at the screen, but I can think about my toes reaching out, 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 and over my head, and I can control, get a little ab workout, control my toes down towards the ground, grab my ankles with my hands, and gently roll down the spine, little by little, taking the counter pose of fish keeping my head in contact with the ground until it reaches the top of my head towards my forehead. Looking back, keeping the shoulders pinned towards the heart and balancing on those elbows. Getting that counter pose, so helpful. And then from there, let's go right into Shavasana. Let's see how much time we have. Yeah, perfect timing. No legs up the wall part two, just Shavasana. If your lower back is not great or no, a work in progress, especially if you're sway back. So for the rest of your life, it's going to be your little process, your little project. Or not, maybe there's a way to heal it. There is yoga. You won't have pain from it. Um, if you practice yoga, the pain stopped for me around 16, 17, so three years practicing yoga, and then the pain in my lower back stopped. But I have to be diligent, okay? So for my shavasana today, especially since I did a, put a lot of pressure on my lower back and handstand, then I'm going to actually have my feet flat on the ground, and I'm going to bring my knees towards each other so that they... Um, balance against each other effortlessly and let's take shavasana so if your lower back doesn't hurt you then you're just going to keep your legs laying on the mat feet are relaxed breath is natural there's no activation through the fingers the hands you can let the hands come to either side of your body they can open up as wide as they want to without going above the shoulder line.
We are right on that 30 mark. So if you need to stop at the 30, then go ahead and like that's that's the 30 mark. Everybody else, let's wiggle our toes, fingers, or rotate your wrists, your ankles, wiggle your legs, wiggle your arms. And let's turn to the right side of the body for fetal pose. And push against the ground with your left hand. And, mm, mm, mm. My hair really wants to come out today. So, okay. And now let's just ground through. I just love supporting my hips. I love having that little openness there. Okay. And think about what you did today. You turned your world, let the eyes float shut. You turned your world upside down, literally. And when we do something like changing our lives and doing something different in the morning for 30 days, we are upsetting the status quo. We are upsetting the, when I hear the word upset, I think of a chessboard and somebody just pushing up on the chessboard. The chessboard was set and then we upset it. We upset it. We're upsetting our lives. And letting life co-create with us the life we want when we let it be guided by the person who is willing to show up and commit to whatever commitment you made. And you back it with action. And life can partner with a person like that because you are movable you are vulnerable, you are open. And that's how we find alignment. Co-creation. Not force. Mm. Thank you for joining me today. Today is 14. Is day 14 of the Sunrise Yoga Challenge. The sunri- the 30-day Sunrise Yoga Challenge for beginners. Unleashing the magic of yoga. Let the eyes float open. I'm wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. Thank you for joining today. Namaste.